Good evening, and welcome to Eye on the Keys. The uh, burning issue, or maybe the not the burning issue, of the 1990s in the Florida Keys is bound to be solid waste. Here with the latest is US1 Radio News Director Bill Becker. According to the recent Hazen and Sawyer report on the Florida Keys solid waste situation, Monroe County faces the prospect of needing nearly $100 million over the next 10 years to solve its mounting solid waste problem. New landfills, new facilities, new state laws, and new programs promise to make solid waste very expensive for Keys residents. The current state legislature is expected to act favorably on a bill creating a Monroe County Solid Waste Authority. That bill is being sponsored by State Representative Ron Saunders. The Waste Authority would have taxing powers and the responsibility for all solid waste in the county and the city of Key West. The prospect of a big solid waste bill led County Commissioner Doug Jones to invite John Albert of Waste Management of Florida to speak to the County Commission on Tuesday. Albert told the Commission that waste management would haul everything out of the county at a lower cost. Very simply stated, what we propose to do is haul the trash out of Monroe County. How will we do this? We would take the existing landfill sites as they are now with the burners. We would remove the bur burners make the existing facility compatible to transfer trailers and haul it out the county and transfer trailers. Where would it be taken? It would be taken to approved landfill sites that waste management owns. How long are we willing to do this for? We feel as though a short-term agreement isn't going to do Monroe County any good. We're willing to go into a 30-year agreement. One question everybody asks is, what's it going to cost me? According to the Hayes and Sawyer report, with whatever type of technology the county would use, the, the cheapest tipping fee that was mentioned in their report, and that was all we had to go on, was $96 a ton. We feel that we, our, our rate would be between $80 and $90 a ton. County Commissioner John Stormont, who chairs the county's solid waste task force, had his doubts and said that Albert was comparing apples and oranges in his figures. So indeed any costs we're looking at are waste management's 80 to 90 plus nine dollars for paying off the incinerators. Whether they're torn out or not, they still had to be bought, right? Yes, sir. And then the recycle program that the state is requiring, we're still going to have to pay for that? Yes, sir. Stormont said he had no problem looking any gift horse in the mouth. Jones responded and touched off a sharp exchange between the two commissioners. Logic, common sense, and if you've ever been in business would tell you that it is got to be cheaper to not build those things, to not build more mountain trash moors throughout this county, and have your garbage taken out of here. I mean, that's common sense. Well, why don't we Mr. Do the... Mayor, Mr. Yes, sir. Mayor, now, yes, sir. if Your I turn. may have the floor, yes, sir. if Mr. Jones would have at least read the report, whether it's valid or invalid, the total cost of all he's talking about, the stuff we have to do, is only $96 a ton. Now, if we're going to pay 80 to 90 just to haul it out, plus closing, plus paying off, regardless of whether we recycle or not, that's more than his price. Now, it's simple mathematics, and I think an idiot can figure the math, and that's what I'm saying is necessary, that us idiots had better listen to a cost analysis before we jump to follow the next guru. In the end, the commission voted unanimously to refer the issue to the administrator and staff for cost analysis and drafting of a request for proposals. For Eye on the Keys and US1 Radio News, I'm Bill Becker. Bill, thanks a million for that report. Uh, so now we've got at least three players in the ring, eh? AgriPost at $45 a ton, Hazen and Sawyer at 96, and Waste Management coming in at the same figure as Hazen and Sawyer. Well, in the words of one of the commissioners, they seem to be coming out of the woodwork at this point. And uh, with the request for proposals, we'll probably see quite a few more. A Super. A lot of, lot of new technology out there. There sure is, and uh, it is uh, going to be the major issue, especially at those kind of prices. Without Thank a doubt. Without Thank a doubt. Thanks for your report. Thank you, Peter. And now, with a lively commentary on tonight's Keys comments, here's our own Chris Devereaux. Thank you, Peter. This is Key's comment, a statement of editorial opinion. I'm Chris Devereaux. Normally I stick to a somewhat rigid script, but tonight, because of all the 
publicity that we've had in the local newspaper on the TDC and Sandra Higgs, I thought I'd stick to somewhat of an outline and give you my feelings on the subject. We enter the scene at scene five. The name of the play is The Life and Time of Sandra Higgs, Tourist Development Council Administrator par excellence. On our first scene opens with some general charges by commissioners that the TDC administration is improperly run. Then employees paid with bed tax funds are used to support certain candidates within the county by doing political mailings in county paid offices on county paid time. Then a very general grand jury investigation says no laws were broken, but well, we need a few contractual guidelines. Then the key lime pie issue rears its head again, another $3,000 boondoggle. Then charges are made Mrs. Higgs is an officer in the key lime pie company, oddly enough, company records indicate that as of April of this year, she was still a officer. The pie is not the issue, she says. Oh, really, Miss Higgs? What is the county commission doing? Why do we have Sandra Higgs with a new contract, a new $243,000 contract, $120,000 more than last year? Last year, when they didn't want to give her a contract, okay, Mom and Dad, you explain to the kiddies about why crime doesn't pay. Yes, I know. The grand jury said no crime was committed. And even though she says she doesn't represent the county but just administrates those funds and can't represent the county, but she does have to be answerable to someone. Shouldn't she be audited? Maybe the county commissioners don't feel that they need an audit on Sandra Higgs activities, but I think they do. It's tax money. That's all the reason I need. Let's see. She closes the doors of her offices, you know, the ones downtown Key West, and is paying her office staff with county funds to serve the needs of tourists. And her employees, in the meantime, are paid county funds to put together political mailers while tourists are sent down the street to another tourist office that bills the county per head for doing Mrs. Higgs' job. And now the state, after the grand jury is over, would like to know who paid the postage on those mailers. Well, if you believe Al Freed of the Florida League of Taxpayers, it isn't a misnomer. Al says the Miami Herald boys, why, there's no mystery. The candidates paid. The candidates paid? Well, Mr. Freed, excuse me. But aren't you the one who personally took the political mailers in question to Sandra Higgs' office? And aren't you the one responsible for failure to file the proper election forms that could cost you some fines, like about $12,000 worth of fines? And isn't this form the one that wasn't filed that shows who paid for what? I guess we need an arch over the entrance to the Keys. Welcome to the greatest show on earth, Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey, Monroe County Politics. The shenanigans and this type of government are over. Tammany and Huey Long are dead. Wilhelmina, now sweetie, if I didn't know you all these years, I'd say there's something really afoul. But you made a big mistake. You should not have voted on the issue on the contract at all. Didn't Miss Higgs send out the mailings for you, the same mailings in question? And Jean Litton, I read with interest your summary in the paper. Do, you look, do we look like calves? Sure, she was foolish and a lot more. Jean, Sandra Higgs is a lot more than foolish. She's cunning. Go spread that manure on another field. You've over-fertilized this one, and we're saturated with the stuff. Doug Jones, I'm surprised. Where is your fire, son? Where's all that campaign rhetoric about cleaning up Monroe County politics? You said not one bill isn't justified will get paid as far as I'm concerned. You bet that's true. You got more people watching you than any Monday night football game ever thought about having. John Stormont, you do a good job, John, but you're not a martyr. My grandfather used to say, you don't want to be a martyr and you don't want to be a saint because they're all dead. It's the same way with the issues, John. If they're not brought to the public timely, they're dead issues. And now the peace de resistance. Mike Puto, you're my biggest disappointment. You're the mayor of the county, for God's sakes. How could you let them vote in a contract for Sandra Higgs without considering in all the facts? How could you turn your back like this on, on the Monroe County residents? And last but not least, and the county attorney, Landy, Randy Ludeker, 
how could you draft a contract with so many loopholes in it and leave out so many segments of the recommendations of the grand jury? There's so many holes in it, Sandra Higgs, when she signs it, will have to print between the holes in the contract. Well, I have a suggestion to the whole problem. I suggest Mrs. Higgs, who incidentally is the wife of Irwin Higgs, the county property appraiser, you decline that contract. Don't sign it and allow the county to re-advertise the position. Or maybe better yet, the time has come for we as citizens of Monroe County to contact the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. and ask the federal grand jury be convened to take a look at these and other issues as to why politics are handled in Monroe County the way they are. I believe the time has come, or are we destined to be kept like mushrooms? Keep us in the dark, feed us plenty of room. M manure, rather. I don't know. That's my comment for tonight. For Eye on the Keys and Keys Comment, I'm Chris Devereaux. Thank you, Chris. Uh, boy, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. Of course, that's my own personal opinion. <clears throat> but in spite of the Herald, in spite of the Citizen, in spite of the grand jury report, in spite of everything, our county commission goes ahead on a four to one vote and awards a contract almost the equal of the President of the United States in its value. It's kind of unbelievable, this kind of raw power politics. That's it for this segment. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. At Edie's Hallmark Shop, the more you look, the more you'll find. At Edie's, you'll find a wide selection of Hallmark cards and many unique gifts and collectibles, like the Tory Art Clown Collection, made in Italy by Henri, hand-carved rake spares, and hand-painted music boxes. Edie's has a unique selection of Sandy Cast, those adorable handcrafted pets. And you can even have a specialized birthday card made in just seconds on the only Hallmark birthday times in the Keys. Edie's Hallmark Shop, in the Big Pine Shopping Mall. The Patio and Home Decorating Shop is celebrating with a store-wide sale. Save 20 to 30% on a great selection of patio furniture, including quality aluminum furniture from Tropitone that's backed by a 15-year guarantee. Choose from over 100 different designer fabrics. Choose patio lounge chairs, umbrellas, accessories, everything you need to make outdoor living easier. Save now during the store-wide sale at the Patio and Home Decorating Shop, 2900 Overseas Highway in Marathon. Whether your taste is tropical rattan or contemporary leather, the Patio and Home Decorating Shop in the Gulfside Village will solve your decorating dilemma. Choose from the widest selection of accessories in the Keys, jewelry's area rugs, silk flowers, trees, window coverings and decorator lamps. The Patio and Home Decorating Shop offers a total interior design service, including interior landscaping. Let their professional staff help you. The Patio and Home Decorating Shop in the Gulfside Village, Marathon. These special moments brought to you by Dr. Morse and OBG Midwives. You can always get a hit at Electronic Video because Electronic Video stocks the largest selection of new releases with more copies of each movie. And because Electronic Video lets you reserve your tape, you'll watch what you want when you want to. Electronic Video also offers Nintendo's complete line of machines and video games for sale or rental. Stop by Electronic Video and Key Plaza for video accessories, VCR rentals, and of course, all the latest video hits. Coming to Electronic Video, Eddie Murphy in Coming to America, a Columbia Pictures home video. And Kevin Costner in The Gunrunner from New World Video. Welcome back. By the way, if you would like to be a sponsor on Eye on the Keys, the rates are $20 for a 30-second commercial and $30 for a 60-second commercial per show. So please contact Mary Hank or Sally Harper here at TCI Cable Advertising. We're pleased to have with us this week Steve Rothhaus and Jeff Kleiman from the Miami Herald, and they're going to tell us a little bit about what they do. We just, um, first, wanted to uh, show, demonstrate that uh, we are two different people 
uh, there's this perception in town that uh, there is actually only one Herald reporter, but actually I'm Steve Rothhouse. This is Jeff Kleinman. I cover Monroe County. Jeff covers the city. Um, we both uh, came to the Keys from uh, Dade County. We uh, have worked for the Herald for about three years apiece. Um, I began working at the Herald um, as a police desk reporter. I worked nights. I worked from five in the afternoon till about two in the morning covering the radios in the city of Miami for Dade County. And uh, that was how I first uh, got started. Uh, we both graduated FIU, Florida International University, and uh, got jobs with the newspaper and uh, went through the Herald's Neighbors system in Dade County. Um, Jeff, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, of course. Neighbors is a, um, a suburban tabloid, and it's uh, very similar to what we do here. We cover a lot of the, of, of the nitty-gritty of the community. We uh, covered meetings, county meetings, city meetings, uh, traffic problems, government. Um, we did soft uh, stories. Um, a lot of people think that we're not even based in the Keys. I, I have, since I've come here, um, I've run into people that ask me, oh, you're in from Miami for the day to cover this story. They don't even realize we, we are a bureau here. And in fact, we are a bureau. Um, Steve and I staff it. We do have a part-time helper in the morning uh, to answer phones and to uh, compile the calendar, the uh, segment uh, that you read in the bo at the bottom of the Keys News uh, that announce the happenings of the day. And uh, of course, we were our office is located above um, Fast Buck Freddy's. We don't have a newsroom per se. It's, it's a lot different than, than Miami, what Steve and I are used to. Uh, we're used to working in a, in a big office with uh, dozens of different reporters and, and, and editors. And editors. That's, that's one different thing, too. We, we do not have an editor in Key West. Right. We have to deal with, uh, with our editors in Miami. And, and maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and difficulties it poses. Well, we're very dependent upon the telephones uh, to file our stories. We work on PCs and, and uh, transmit our, our, our copy um, by a modem to Miami. Uh, PCs are personal computers. Personal computers. And a modem is uh, how you do it with a phone. Exactly. Right? And uh, we uh, send our stories to Miami over the telephone lines. Uh, they're received by our editors at the Herald in downtown Miami. They read the stories. They call us, ask us if, uh, if they have any questions about what we've written. And, and the editing process is done over the telephone, basically. And another, another big thing is we have no um, capability of developing film here in Key West. Uh, we t Steve and I take our own photos. We don't have a photographer here. And that's one of the things we've had to get used to. In, in Miami, when we worked, we had uh, any one of dozens of photographers at our beck and call. Right. Now we, uh, we end up taking our own photos and uh, have to uh, deliver the film to the airport every day by 2.30 p.m. in order to uh, get the film to Miami to process it. It's a, it's a very difficult thing. Uh, we have early deadlines about 6.30 in the evening uh, in order for our stories to be edited by 8. And uh, the paper um, is, is run off in Miami. It goes to press in Miami. And it's trucked to the Keys in the middle of the night and uh, delivered at about 6 or 7 in the morning. Right. And about the process? The papers start coming into Monroe County, I'd say, about 3 o'clock in the morning because I was talking to um, Commissioner Stormont earlier today, and he said that he, as he was leaving uh, Tuesday's commission meeting, which actually ran into Wednesday morning, as he was coming home, he stopped at the store and he was able to get the next day's paper. So you can you know, buy the paper in convenience stores uh, early in the morning, and then, of course, they're on the newsstands and they're delivered to the homes uh, by uh, the time you wake up. Right. Well, I know when I get my Miami Herald, the first thing I turn to is the Keys News section. Uh, I rip the first page away and I go searching for that Keys News section. And you guys really do a tremendous job down here. And people have not realized that you're here. They think you come down from Miami on a daily basis or when there's a story to cover. But you guys are actually here working the Florida Keys for the Absolutely. Miami Herald. It, can people get in touch with you if they have a news story? Sure. If someone wants to call either Jeff or myself, now I cover the county government, Jeff covers the city of Key West, but of course, you know, we're in to take calls from anyone. Uh, they can call 294-5131. That's 294-5131. That's only if you have a news tip 
or a news item, or if you want to discuss something that you've read in the newspaper. Right, now, the cir circulation department has a different number. They're located in a different office, and their number is 294-4683, and uh, they deal with problems with uh, home delivery and, and newsstand sales. And uh, the Herald does sell classifieds, too, and that's a, uh, out of, done out of the Miami office, but there's an 800 number. It's 1-800-678-2527. Um, now, these numbers are listed in the phone book if the folks at home didn't get those. Right? Sure. And uh, of course, you know, uh, we are, you know, out on the streets. People see us and they stop us. And, and oftentimes, uh, uh, people have come to, to, to me and, and said that they've had, you know, story ideas or they would like to pass on a tip. And feel free that if you do see us, uh, either of us, to be able to, you know, say hello and to offer suggestions or to uh, give us story ideas. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. We uh, hope to have you back here uh, very soon and uh, bringing us some of these stories. Uh, can I just clarify something? Sure. When I say, when I say tips, I'm, I'm not talking about loose change. You know, we're, we're, not, <laughs> we're not soliciting money here. What we're talking about are news items. Great. And thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate you being with us and hope to see a lot more of you here on Eye on the Keys. Great. Thanks. Thank you. And now, with this week's county administrator's report, we have Assistant County Administrator Peter Hort. Peter? First thing I'd like to say that, uh, as far as this show is concerned, boy, you guys play rough. Chris Devereaux is a tough act to follow when uh, speaking of government. But it's budget time again in Key's government. The budgets uh, are the annual four-month process by which the Monroe County government establishes a budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Things this year, however, are going to be a little different because of some actions that the Monroe County Board of County Commissioners have taken. They've taken two steps, basically, to change the process this year. The first step is that um, they've decreed that budgets that are directly supported by your tax dollars, uh, property tax dollars, ad valorem taxes, uh, will not increase over last year's level. And secondly, they've uh, appointed a blue ribbon committee of private citizens to sit in on the budget process. The Blue Ribbon Committee members uh, are not county employees. They are business and community leaders uh, who will serve as unpaid citizen consultants. Where do your tax dollars go? Well, the Blue Ribbon Committee is beginning to find out where they go. And what they're finding out is that uh, your tax dollars go predominantly for services. And I'd like to take the opportunity to explain to you what services my division, the Community Services Division, provides for the taxpayers. Community service is one of six divisions of the county. And this division is comprised of five departments. Those departments are code enforcement, airports, social services, the extension services, and the library system. How do we spend your tax dollar? Of course, very carefully. But on a department by department basis, code enforcement, whether you love the land plan or you hate it, whether you think that it is too strong or not strong enough, the fact remains that it is the law of Monroe County and it has to be enforced. It is also mandated by the state of Florida. That's the news. Editorially, I'll let you fill in the blank whether that's good or bad news, but that is the news. The other news is that while the Code Enforcement Department is enforcing those laws, they're able to return 50 cents on your tax dollar. We're currently bringing in approximately $15,000 per month on average, which is about 50% of the code enforcement budget. So we're able to return about half of what we spend. The airports, airports, uh, those services are obvious. Thousands of safe operations every year uh, while bringing uh, Keys residents and visitors to the Keys in and out of the area to the, with, at the two airports. Uh, Key West and uh, Marathon. These are uh, businesses that are being run by as businesses. Both of them are self-supporting. Both of them at this point, uh, first time uh, for the Marathon Airport, but now both of those facilities bring in more revenue than uh, they spend. Social services. Social services is a department that uh, gives care predominantly to the elderly through programs of nutrition, transportation, uh, in-home services. 
Grants help here, but they only provide approximately 50% of the cost of these services and programs. Extension services, this is the extension services which uh, just recently uh, celebrated its 75th anniversary, is probably the best bargain in Monroe County. Uh, this is one of the few programs that's very heavily supported by the state. Two of the uh, employees in uh, the Extension Service are paid uh, predominantly by state funds, and it is an information service on the one hand in that it will provide information on virtually any plant or animal in the Keys, and the information, of course, is all free. It also um, administers the Boat Improvement Fund, uh, providing uh, boat ramps, public, public uh, docks, and uh, more importantly, or more numerously, uh, the channel marking system throughout the Keys. The library system is the last department that's in my uh, division, and it's really the jewel of the system. There are four branch libraries and a bookmobile, including a, a brand new Key Largo branch that uh, will open this, this uh, summer. It's a uh, service that probably costs the citizens of Monroe County five dollars for every person who walks into our door, and yet we charge those same citizens of Monroe County absolutely nothing for that service. That's how some of your tax dollars are spent and how the budget process uh, is going to be put together this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. We really appreciate that report. And we'll look forward to hearing more from the county administrator's office in terms of various things and programs that the county is doing. We'll be right back after these messages. Hair dye. Hair dye. Lipstick. Lipstick. Motor oil. Motor oil. When we say New Genesis Carpet, certified by Amico, can resist almost anything, we aren't kidding. Genesis resists the worst stains. Stains other leading stain-resistant carpets can't. Genesis, the ultimate stain and fade resistance, because you love color. Bleach. Bleach. Now available at Key Carpet and Furniture, 2330 North Roosevelt Boulevard in Key West. Quality, uniqueness, and price will pleasantly surprise you at Royal Appliances in Key Largo. Royal carries a complete line of brand name appliances. Amana, KitchenAid, Tampin, and Whirlpool. Step next door and let Royal Furniture assist you in your decorating plans. Royal Furniture has everything, from contemporary styling and rattan and wicker to conventional furniture, a 7,000 square foot showroom of unusual paintings and decorator lamps, bedding, silk flowers, and a complete line of accessories. Treat yourself royally at Royal Furniture and Royal Appliances. We all know Mercedes-Benz is the height of luxury, but did you also realize driving a Mercedes needn't be just a dream? A Mercedes-Benz is for those who appreciate value, investment, and guaranteed service. You can't afford not to look into the advantages Mercedes has over other cars. And remember, a used Mercedes has more to offer than a brand new domestic or import car. Make your dream a reality. Call Bill Essery Motors today and put yourself behind the wheel of a Mercedes-Benz. not happen until you call us. Buying, selling, renting, or building, call ERA Lower Keys Realty. Welcome back. And if you would like to sponsor Eye on the Keys, please contact Sally Harper or Mary Hank here at TCI Cable Advertising. And now back with us this week, citizen reporter Richard Hatch, who brought us last week uh, sports crime. Richard? Yeah, good evening. This is uh, Richard Hatch, crime reporter with the Key West Citizen. Uh, tonight I have several critical items on the agenda, and I'll start with the most important topic of the week. 
The mayor has asked an independent study group to do yet again another study on the police and sheriff consolidation idea. The latest group of consultants, uh, all overweight, recently turned out, gave the proposal to the mayor. It recommends a bicycle cop brigade. Well, first, a couple of problems with the cops on bicycles. Uh, the officers would need to get short pants so as not to get bicycle grease on their trousers. That can be taken care of. Secondly, and more importantly, the officers would not be allowed to use the drive-in windows at fast food hamburger establishments. The fast food hamburger establishments don't allow bicycles. How is a cop going to get a Whopper to go? Secondly, on the positive side, bicycles use far less fuel than cars, and it's a fact they're much less expensive. As a matter of fact, bicycles are impounded by the police department every day. And some of these are nice bicycles. These bicycles are frequently uh, confiscated from crack cocaine dealers who seem to get these incredible 18-speed mountain bikes, even if only for a shoe, few short hours. Now, it's doubtful that the bicycle brigade will become a reality. It's very difficult to carry a prisoner on the back of a Schwinn. Uh, I'll keep you updated on the latest report in the Bicycle Brigade. Now, I have uh, some special information to present tonight. One of the lesser known reasons why Monroe County's only daily newspaper is switching to a morning paper. Well, the fact is, there'll be a longer time between when the paper goes to press and when it's actually delivered to the doorstep. This, folks, will allow the ink to dry. Now. The several extra hours in the morning will allow that ink to spread out in the porous paper and dry thoroughly. And this is very important for those of you who tend to pick your noses. That's correct. Uh, if you've ever read the Key West Citizen, looked up and wondered why people were laughing you, it's probably because you picked your nose and left an ink smudge right there. Folks, it's no longer a problem. Isn't that nice? I'm just letting you know some of the nicer side benefits of a morning paper that probably won't be talked about. OK. Sports crime. Last week, we talked about sharks on steroids. Well, there's a new uh, sport crime out there. It's jet, key, jet ski slalom racing using endangered sea turtles as slalom buoys. It's a sick sport. Hitting the turtle. The object is to go around the turtles as close as possible. If you hit the turtles, there are penalty points. Not to mention the fact that if a Marine Patrol agent happens by, you will get hard time. It's expected this sport will die out very fast. OK. Uh, there's, uh, in the state news of the Key West Citizen Day, there was an interesting piece on page four. Uh, the House of Representatives in Tallahassee passed a bill outlawing the tossing of dwarves. It was on page four. I'm not making this up. It seems that some bar patrons in this state were, uh, as a bar attraction, letting dwarves don protective gear. They were then tossing them onto a mat. Well, uh, the House put an end to that. However, there's been a rumor going around that the uh, gambling ship Southern Elegance may return to Key West. That was the ship that docked at sunset, belched all the big black smoke during the sunset performance. Well, they say it's going to come back go out beyond the three mile limit and offer the dwarf tossing there. Folks, it's not true. I got it straight from Sicily from the mouths of Vinny and Vito. It's not going to happen. Okay, finally, today uh, in the Key West Citizen, we had a story, dolphin ulcers cured in keys. It seems there were some dolphins in an aquarium up in Baltimore that due to stress developed ulcers in their mouth. Well, they've come down here to the Grassy Key Dolphin Research Center where they've been feeding them maylocks. Well, I thought that kind of strange. I called up Greenpeace. We've talked to them, and we have agreed that they are going to set up marine mammal therapy stress reduction uh, classes for these dolphins. OK, folks, that's it for tonight. I'm Richard Hatch. Take care, and stay off page two. Peter? <laughs> Thanks, Richard. We really appreciate that sports crime update and look forward to seeing more of you here on Eye on the Keys. And now, for the first time on camera, practically everywhere, the intrepid freelance reporter Elliot Barron. Thank you, Peter. I'd like to talk to you for a couple of minutes about the A word. You know that topic that you really shouldn't discuss at the dinner table? That's right, affordable housing. Everyone says they want it, but nobody can agree on who should pay for it. 
employers want it, workers want it, commissioners want it, and the builders want it, provided they get city subsidized breaks. But while we argue about whether or not the little old lady on Seidenberg's taxes should go up to help pay for some Burger King employee's apartment, the situation is getting worse. Every year we lose countless existing low-cost apartments. The mansions converted to multiple apartments decades ago are converted back to luxury dwellings for the affluent. Our residential units are converted to commercial space. And boarding houses become guest houses. Units that were once occupied year-round by our local workforce now rent on a nightly basis to tourists from points north. The city can't tell you how many units we lose annually. They don't count them. But the number in recent years must run in the hundreds. While we argue about building more, nothing is being done to prevent the further erosion of the existing housing stock. Consider the E.H. Gatto guest house at the corner of Duval and South Street. A little over a year ago, local workers resided there. A blink and a paint job later, some six apartments have been replaced by six new transient units. The project didn't need to come before the city commission because it was fewer than 10 units. How many housing units would we lose if every apartment building with fewer than 10 units converted overnight to guest accommodations? The answer is plenty. The city's growth management ordinance was enacted some years ago to guarantee a construction balance between housing and hotel rooms. It's a commendable concept. The way it works is that three residential units must be approved for every new hotel room. Of the residential units approved, 40% must be affordable according to set guidelines. The problem is that the city does not account for lost housing units. It's like a checkbook in which only deposits are entered and never withdrawals. Suppose 300 residential units get approved. The city can turn around and okay plans for a 100-unit hotel. Unfortunately, in the meantime, 400 apartments may have been converted, leaving a net reduction of 100 units in the city's housing stock. Oh yeah, some of those lost apartments have been converted to transient rooms, so while the housing supply has shrunk by 100 units, we've added 200 or 250 new guest rooms. That's not how the GMO is supposed to work, but that's what is actually happening. Currently, the city has three hotel developments on a waiting list, eagerly awaiting new housing unit approvals. Yet, the recent settlement with the Pier House allows them to add 15 guest units at the Handprint Building without waiting for those same approvals. What happens to the 45 dwelling units that the GMO states should balance those new tourist accommodations? Presently, nothing. What should happen is that the housing account should show a debit of 45 units, 45 homes that should be built just to bring the city up to zero. It's time the city started practicing responsible accounting. That means starting to record those withdrawals, those checks written in that housing checkbook. We're feeling the pinch now because we've been overdrawing that account for years. That's my comment. I'm Elliot Barron. Thank you, Elliot. That's, uh really an important and a very burning issue in Key West. And uh, my problem with all of the affordable housing uh, plans that have come before the city to date is that somehow they're asking us to pay for them. And uh, frankly, I think if a tourist industry needs affordable housing, they should build it for themselves. That's my comment. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back with more Eye on the Keys right after this. Romero Appliance, your Key West GE headquarters, invites you into the future with something new and exciting, the monogram. GE's high-tech kitchen with designer ideas in mind. Beautiful European looks yet great American size. Journey through an astronomical selection of GE electronics, from kitchen companions to 45-inch stereo color TVs. Also, an outstanding floor display of washers, dryers, microwaves, a galaxy of GE home appliances. Romero Appliance, 1696 North Roosevelt Boulevard, where the future awaits you. Five reasons why 80% of Largo Honda's customers drive over 80 miles to buy a new or pre-owned car. At Largo Honda, you get big city selection without big city prices. We have a huge selection of pre-owned cars in stock now, and all come with a 30-day limited warranty, and must pass a rigid 32-point inspection by our experienced service staff. Largo Honda's professional sales staff will beat any bona fide deal. 
Plus, we'll talk price over the phone. Largo Honda also delivers to your home or office. Servicing the keys for over eight years. Largo Honda, mile marker 100, Key Largo. Hi, I'm John Rogers, still working hard to bring you better quality products at better prices. And at Rogers Clearance House, you'll find a warehouse full of bargains. With eight stores throughout the South Florida and the Keys, Mr. Rogers has accumulated a fabulous selection of discontinued lines, oddballs, and slightly damaged furniture. And they're all available at 30 to 70% off the retail price. This clearance house is full of bargains at up to 70% off every day. Rogers Furniture, a South Florida tradition for quality and price. Welcome back to Why on the Keys. Uh, we have a uh, special tape this evening. This was shot by my wife, Judith Anderson, with our little daughter, Michaela, on her back. And it's in honor of Memorial Day and our veterans who have fought and died for our country. Hi, this is Judith Anderson talking for Eye on the Keys. Today, we are going to be bringing you Memorial Day, the tears in the past up to today. And in the courthouse hangs the American flag. Here we are at our local cemetery. And veterans, we salute you. Thanks. That was my wife, Judith Anderson, and my little daughter, Michaela, and our way of offering a tribute to the American veterans and the ones who died we remember on this Monday. And now with us here, we have State's Attorney Kirk Selch. And Kirk's going to tell us a little about what the State's Attorney's Office does, and then he's going to be available for your phone calls uh, to ask him any questions you like. Kirk? Pleasure to be with you, Peter. Uh Look forward to uh, joining your new program. Everything I have heard is that uh, Eye on the Keys has been a tremendous success the last couple of weeks. What I thought I'd do just briefly with you all was to give a little bit of idea about what our office does. The state attorney's office is, handles all the prosecutions in the Florida Keys. Uh, throughout the state of Florida, for example, there are 20 state attorneys, 20 state attorney offices, and we're divided into circuits, and our jurisdiction in Monroe is Monroe County. We have three offices. The main office is located here in Key West. Uh, we have uh, 10 lawyers with us now. We have five investigators plus support staff. We have a victim witness program to help those who are victims of crimes, tells them how to get along with the problems they have, what can be done to assist them. We have uh, the ability to assist them in receiving what's what we call crimes compensation. That's a program whereby if you're a victim of a crime, you sustain injury, even if, even if the person is not caught, you still have the ability to seek compensation from the state of Florida to help you recover from the damages that have been caused. In the Marathon area, we have an office in Marathon. We uh, have two attorneys in the office, an investigator in the office, and that serves the Middle Keys area. All the cases that happen, of course, in the Marathon area are tried right there at the Marathon County Courthouse. And we have another office in the Upper Keys. This office is located at the Plantation Key Government Center. And we have three attorneys there to, to assist the Upper Keys people in the prosecution of crimes. I think that maybe give an example of how our office is involved is, is to start, let's say, with a, a burglary. You're at your home tonight. You've got a burglary. Uh, it's reported to the police. If it's in the city of Key West, Chief Webster people uh, come to the scene. They investigate it. If, through their investigation, they find that uh, an arrest is made. 
that comes to our office. That's the point that the state attorney's office in a typical case gets involved in it. When it once it comes to our office, it's assigned to a prosecutor, it's assigned to a victim witness counselor, and the case proceeds you know, through a trial situation. Uh, we're also responsible for giving guidance. We give training to police officers. Uh, as has been in the news a lot, uh, as state attorney, I'm the uh, attorney for the grand jury. All matters of the grand jury our office is involved with. Uh, we pretty much touch everything that touches the possibility of crime in Monroe County. That's great. And uh, <clears throat> one question that, that comes up, if someone has a, a knowledge of, of a crime that's not necessarily a police crime, say it's a crime of corruption or it's uh, uh, some other uh, type of, of problem, do they come and speak to you directly about this? Uh, say it's a matter for a grand jury uh, investigation, they think. Or There's a couple of, couple of ways you can handle that. Uh, the first way is that uh, you know, we accept non anonymous reports. A lot of people uh, don't like to come forward. Uh, if someone wants just to call and give us information, we accept that information. Uh, we'll go ahead and investigate based on that information. Uh, if someone wants to come forward, come into our office, uh, we can assure them that uh, the information they give us will not be passed on should they desire. Uh, they will usually meet with one of our investigators, one of our attorneys, and if there's sufficient information there that allows us to proceed in any matter, we'll begin an investigation at that point. If it's a matter that you know, touches upon something that perhaps a grand jury would be appropriate on, the way that is handled is we suggest that they put a letter to the grand jury, uh, put in the letter the, the concerns they have, what areas uh, that they would like to see investigated, and that goes to the grand jury. The grand jury makes the decision at that point whether or not they desire to investigate or not investigate. Now, grand jury testimony and deliberations are utterly, absolutely confidential and secret, are they not? That's correct. You have a law in the state of Florida that, uh, that states that anything, anything that happens in the grand jury room stays in the grand jury room. If you violate the secrecy of a grand jury, okay, there is a possibility of criminal penalty being passed upon for up to a year in jail. It's a first degree misdemeanor. Well, what's this rumor that, I, that I've heard if, if, uh, if Sandy Higgs is, is taking any legal action to find out who spoke before the grand jury investigating he's advertising and marketing in the TDC? Uh, they have filed, through her attorney, they have filed a motion for what's called public records. That's a petition. That's uh, in the state of Florida. Anyone who wants any governmental records can go ahead and request it because government records generally are public records. Uh, her attorney has requested that uh, we release to her or the clerk who actually has the, the file of everyone who appeared in front of the grand juries released to her a copy of the names and the dates that people appeared. Uh, I have filed a motion in court to quash that. It's my belief that that's something that's secret. That's the policy of the grand jury. That's why people are can come in front of a grand jury without having any fear. And say things they wouldn't ordinarily say. That's right. It's an open area. It's something they can so come in and really speak as to how the they want to speak. Entire process and uh, just well, so she could add to her enemies list, right? I, well, uh, that's not fair, Kirk. We've got a break coming up, and we're going to be right back with Kirk Selch and your telephone calls at two nine six seven seven five five. Right after this. Most Americans spend over one-third of their lives in bed, yet spend less money on their sleeping comfort over a lifetime than they do on one week's vacation. Now relax and take a vacation every night with a new bed from Waterbed World. Waterbed World stocks and special orders the largest selection of conventional and flotation bedding in the Keys, as well as furniture ensembles and accessories. Waterbed World offers easy same-day financing and free delivery from Key West to Key Largo. If you've ever had a sleepless night or suffered lower back pain, then it's time you talk to the sleep specialist at Waterbed World. Havana Plaza, Key West. Why bank your money when you can invest it in the Navy Key West Federal Credit Union where it works for you? Each depositor is a member owner, so profits are returned to them in the form of higher dividend rates, lower loan rates, and over 40 special services. Stop by the main office at Perry Court and find out why Navy Key West is one of the fastest growing financial institutions in the Keys. The Navy Key West Federal Credit Union, growing to meet your needs. At Navy Key West Federal Credit Union. I'm proud to live in this great free country, and I'm proud of our commitment to free speech, and I'm proud of our country's commitment to protecting the rights of its citizens to work and live free from bigotry and violence. 
That's why I was amazed to discover that many people die each year in anti-gay attacks and thousands more are left scarred emotionally and physically. Bigotry has no place in this great nation and violence has no place in this world, but it happens. Prejudice hurts, kills. Please don't be a part of it. In January of 1912, Flagler and his railroad that went to sea pulled him to Trumbo Point for the first time to what, what, what was considered in Key West, the biggest celebration they had ever known. I'm standing close to one of the few pieces left of the railroad right-of-way in Key West. This concrete slab located at the end of Hilton Haven is all that remains of the foundation that supported the mechanism that raised and lowered the drawbridge that once spanned the entrance to Garrison Bight and carried the train cars over the last bridge before they pull into the Key West terminal. The bridge tender's house is now the office of the Hilton Haven Motel. And there are a few residents on Hilton Haven who claim they still hear the railroad whistles late at night from the railroad that went to sea and died at sea in the hurricane of Labor Day, 1935. I'm Charles Sonny McCoy, and this was Just a Minute in History. Welcome back to Eye on the Keys. <clears throat> Before we start our telephones this evening, we'd like to do a little follow-up. We had a call last week from a gentleman named George Freiberger, lives up the Keys, and he had a question for HRS Administrator Ron Heron concerning a wheelchair for a five-year-old retarded boy. Unfortunately, Ron had left the uh, studio at the time the telephone call came in. We did follow up on this. And we found out that the five-year-old retarded boy, the friend of Mr. Freiberger's, will be receiving his wheelchair sometime in June or late July. So we're really pleased to announce that, and we could follow up on this and, and get that done. Kirk, let's take this first phone call. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Peter. It's Elizabeth Cannell. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? I want to commend you for your show. It's just wonderful, it's lively and active, and it's just a big relief after all this heavy stuff. Number two is I commend the citizen for their beautiful color photograph on the first page yesterday. All right. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Elizabeth. Appreciate your call. By the way, if you have uh, questions for any of the guests that were on tonight, most of them are still here with us, so we can bring them on and answer your questions. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. I'm Dora Hernandez. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello, how are you? Fine, and you? <laughs> Good. Well, I'm Dora Hernandez. And that's nice. You all talk about Memorial Day. Oh, thank you. It's very nice, and you show some films. I am a mother of three sons in the Korean War, and they are proud to serve the country. Thank God they're here with me. Yes, ma'am. Well, God bless you. And I like your little baby. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I'm kind of fond of her myself. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Peter. Hello. Uh, another fine show, and Richard Hatch is just delightful. Uh, no question. I uh, really enjoy that segment. Uh, I had a point. Uh, Elliot Barron was talking about affordable housing, and I think maybe we've uh, missed something in examining the recent news. It looks to me like maybe it's solved. When Ilchuk prepared the uh, report for DeFour on contracting our police department, he uh, explained how uh, we can solve that problem by increasing beginning pay scales 25%, giving everybody a car, and reducing total costs. And uh, my research consultant, Joe the Numbers Man Biagi, who, by the way, is not related to other convicts with the same name, has told me we could probably solve the labor problem for all of Monroe County. Every business, if we'd simply give a car to each employee, increase beginning pay scales 25%, reduce total cost. It'll be the L. Chuck Hyman miracle. Taxes will be lower, incomes higher, and affordable housing totally unnecessary. And this is from the same people who brought us Montanay and lower electric costs and the possibility of charging to see the sunset. I think we ought to look at it more. But maybe first, we should also look at the idea that since the sheriff is currently spending three times per capita, what he's proposing will be the cost to run Key West. Why not try a trial period where the sheriff's office handles what it handles now 
at the cost it suggests it can handle Key West, oh, give them half, three quarters, even a million dollars for some kind of a group efficiency differential. Now, I'm discounting the prisons. That would mean cutting their budget from about 15 and a half to only about 8 million. And if it works successful for a year, then stay with it. It's going to be extremely difficult, certainly, to go back to a city police department. It would cost a fortune and take far, far longer than 90 days. So let's give it a trial. But I'm looking forward to the Ilchuk Hyman miracle, eliminating the need for affordable housing, and seeing all these people get their cars. I Tom, think it's a great idea. It sounds like a great plan, Dave. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. You bet. And uh, check with Joe the numbers, man. Make sure he's got those figures right. Will do. Well, all right. Peter, I'm sure everybody in my office would like that also. Yeah, no, it sounds yeah. like a really great plan. Uh, I got a couple questions for you. Uh, the county commission went ahead and approved on Tuesday the contract with Sandra Higgs for $243,000 for what's basically an administrative task with a staff of two. Uh, they deleted the audit procedures that were strongly recommended in the grand jury report. Do you, what, what's your feeling on that? Or is that an unfair question to ask you? Well, the this, this situation that you have, and I get asked questions all the time about decisions by grand juries, is that, you know, my posture is, is that, you know, as legal advisor to the grand jury, I'm in the room during all the testimony, all the secret information and evidence that's presented. Uh, for me to make comments, it's hard to differentiate between what I know outside the jury room and from what I hear inside the jury room. And typically, because of that, I usually don't uh, speak on behalf of the grand jury. Their report under the law is what speaks. And uh, Well, they were very strong on that point. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know, I think what people need to realize about the grand jury is that, you know, you have 18 people that are, you know, drawn out of a hat, so to speak. They're voters. Uh, they represent the whole community. And they work very diligently, very hard, and give of their time, you know, to make recommendations that they feel are in the best interest of their community. And I think that uh, this grand jury in particular, uh, Judge Lester, when we returned the report, uh, commented upon the, the diligence of that grand jury and the fine report and uh, the effort that they placed into it. And uh, uh, I think this, this uh, county owes a debt to those people who, you know, are drawn out of their businesses, are paid yep. $10 a day. It certainly they does. They get out there and they do their work. I wonder if our commissioners honored that debt uh, on Tuesday doesn't seem like it. Let's take this phone call, unfortunately, the last one we have. Uh, good evening, you're on the air. Uh, hi, can I speak to Kirk, please? Is, is this Pete? Yeah. Pete, how you doing? Good. Good. Um, uh, I'd like to ask Kirk uh, how he his, uh, his um, office interdicts with the uh, U.S. Coast Guard and uh, how, how he does that. All right. Okay. We have, uh, I think, probably right now the best relationships uh, of any law enforcement community in the state of Florida. We constantly are, are working together with the various agencies. We hold a, a monthly luncheon that, uh, where we have the heads of all the offices, uh, Customs, DEA, U.S. Marshal's Office, uh, all the federal agencies uh, join us so we can sit down and discuss issues that affect the entire community. With the Coast Guard, we have uh, investigators from our office on a regular basis who meet with Coast Guard personnel uh, they discuss uh, various information. Uh, if we get information that uh, we pick up that uh, there's a, a drug load coming in, we pass that information on to the Coast Guard. The Coast so Guard you then can yeah. avoid redundancy. So you, you can, can avoid redundancy. Plus, moving. plus what you have is uh, we don't have the jurisdiction they do. Right. They have the ability to go out to the source. We don't. So, Kirk, I hate to say this, but we're out of time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the following businesses for their support. The Tides Inn at the corner of Flagler and Bertha, great drive through and local discounts, as well as the Curry Mansion, corner of Carolina and Ann. Uh, let their, your guests be their guests. And I'd like to thank you all for being with us. I'd like to thank the fine guests we had on the show this evening. Good night and God bless you all from Eye on the Keys. Exclusive 
original programming on your Florida Keys channel 5.